Hey now, PB Grizz here checking out another sweet knife. Another officer style knife. Uh, this one made in Germany. I love this. I see this a lot. I don't know why they did it. Uh, yeah, it really makes no sense to me. I think they do it so that the idea is that open that looks like the right way to have the logo but regardless that's how they have the logo upside down what does the logo say it says class c l a a s the thing above it that's called a knotter yeah i thought it was a claw hammer too at first which is why it took me so long to figure out who these people were uh, Kloss is a uh, German manufacturer of farm and agricultural equipment and heavy equipment, you know, uh, uh, skid loaders and combines and hay balers and stuff like that. Speaking of hay balers, uh, this knotter apparently is the patented device that allow them to create the first uh, self-tying hay balers. So, uh, yeah, pretty big deal and uh, pretty cool thing. Uh, the company goes back to, uh, I think around 1913 or so, uh, you know, their original, uh, machines were track steam traction engines, which I think steam traction engines are so cool. And, uh, maybe one day I'll own it. If, if not a small, like, uh, you know, uh, crude oil engine, uh, maybe I'll get a steam, steam engine or something. That would be super cool. I would love to work on that, but uh, for now, knives will just have to uh, to do. So we've got really nice black scales. These remind me of like a modern phenolic. I, I assume this is a pretty old one. This is the early logo for class. They've been using a just, they haven't used that image for a long time. But uh, I don't know how old this knife is. If I had to guess 50s or 60s or so, it could be no earlier than that, but I doubt it. Could be as early as the 40s, perhaps. Super cool knife, though. Let's look at it the right way and check out, peep them, bird's eye rivets. Bickety bam. Very nice. Looks like uh, stainless steel pins with brass washers. Super cool. Nickel silver shield. Brass pins. Bickety bow. Brass liners. Get the back view. She's a little scuffed up, but not too bad at all. First up, we got a one, two, three, four, five turn corkscrew. Because I had to count it because I had a brain fart for a second. And um, yeah, so we got a five turn corkscrew. Not really fluted, just kind of flat, uh, you know, nice solid corkscrew. Good deal right there. Gotta love a good corkscrew. We got that all. Bam. Kind of a, a rounded shape to this all. Not a real big fan of this all shape. Doesn't fit the knife as naturally. Like I like when they kind of taper back and the tip goes all the way to the end. Still very nice, very serviceable all. Good action, good sound, good job all around, guys. I mean, this is like, you know, a handmade knife. It's got the handmade feel. Very cool. We got a can opener. And uh, it looks like a very useful can opener. I like that it's a little farther out. It kind of looks odd, but I think that would actually help it work better as a can opener. Getting the handle out of the way a little bit. And even the way it's tilted, you wouldn't have to pull it up as high or draw it as far to be pulling the, the uh, cutting edge through. So, yeah, I, I dig it. I think it's very functional. Like, this is something you can tell it was bent. Like, this was heated and bent with a pair of pliers rather than being stamped, which is kind of cool. We got that cap lifter. And uh, this reminds me of a lot of cap lifters I see on like German knives from like the 20s to the 40s. And so uh, you can tell they basically did this. They drilled a hole and then they ground this down. So that's kind of interesting. They were like, boom, boom. I bet they even drilled two holes and then do this. But you can tell it wasn't stamped out. So definitely handmade. Super cool. Next up, we got that lovely little clip blade. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you catch that song in the intro? I, I don't know what I was thinking there, but it's kind of silly. So, I, yeah, I was like, yeah, let me roll with that. I was just jamming that out with my looper. 
a few minutes before this knife arrived. Yeah, stainless rust fry as good always. Interesting thing about that is it has carbon steel springs. And I've cleaned them up quite a bit. They were pretty uh, dark when I got them, but it's very evident that the springs are carbon steel. Probably these tools too. Probably the tools, probably everything except the blades. <laughs> to be honest, the, even the can opener and uh, uh, cap lifter, whatever the hell that thing's called, got some serious rust on them. All the blades are pretty much pristine besides scratches, but can't blame that on the metal. Ma'am, Julanko, Soul Engine, Germany. Julanko is another of the vast and various German knife makers as I type it in my keyboard. But, yeah, I don't know what it stands for. I think it stands for, I forget. I know I've seen it somewhere before. It's like Jewel and Company. It, like, it stands, it's parts of somebody's name. But, uh, oh, yeah, here it is. Julian Langenberg and Co. What a lazy video I'm doing now. I couldn't even bother opening uh, the webpage before I started the video. So, I'm really slipping. My quality control is just down the tubes. I, I wouldn't blame you if you all is unsubscribed right now. Uh, yeah, and I'm not going to apologize. I really don't care. But, yeah, it's a nice blade. Very reminiscent of, you know, a certain uh, famous Swiss manufacturer's blade. But we're not going to call it a clone. We're not going to call it a clone. It's a German officer's style knife. That's what I'm going with from now on. I'm not calling them clones. I'm going to give them a little more respect and say that they are in the style of an officer's knife. I love Victorinox. Even though I believe those knives are in the style of these ones. But uh, I'll get to that one day. I'm building up my case slowly but surely. I'm on the case. And that's all she wrote. All right. Thanks for watching. That got a little silly. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Peter Greer is out.